Okay, welcome back to the channel where we are building a video game from scratch using Love 2D and Lua. I've got, um... I think what I want to do today is work on our dialogue boxes. So, if you look at, you know, in front of our character here, we've got a little red box that we reduced the opacity for. And that is our detection for a dialog box. So if that red is colliding with a signpost like this, then we are printing up uh, some text. So we've got a couple of things to worry about. Right here, um, this text, you know, it goes so far, it goes on to the fourth line where we need to come up with something that you know, prompts us to paginate the text over to the next series of text. And then we have it, you can read the sign from the left or right, or from beneath it looking up, but you cannot read it from down. So I guess let's, I guess let's try to work on the pagination first. And if we get that working, we can make sure it's working on our mobile deployment. And then we can also add a, a dialogue option when we hit A, when we're next to an NPC like this. So if we're colliding and A is pressed and it's colliding with an NPC, we can trigger a specific dialogue for the NPC. And then we've got, you know, after that, we got to worry about how we kind of plan out the branching for the dialogue. What part of the game has which part of the dialogue uh, so it's not always the same and boring right so that's going to be something I, you know, I've never done any of this stuff before so it'll be fun to kind of figure it out but let's worry about the pagination first I think the I think the first step is going to be to just count how many text characters can fit on a line now we just updated our font for the dialog box to be a monospace font so we should be able to just you know count how many characters per line and then we can count you know if the total characters of a given dialog text field is greater than the total amount that fits in a dialog box then we need to make a second page of pagination for it to go through so let's see if we can figure that out In our uh, signpost class that we're instantiating here, this is where we're giving the text for the uh, for the flower garden, at least. So what I'm going to do is just put a bunch of numbers in here, and it'll just tell us how many characters can fit on a given line it's probably less than 15 but let's see if it's if we put 15 in there what that looks like oh can handle more than 15 so let's say 20 21 22 3 4 5 okay so it looks like it can handle 29 no 19 yeah, it can handle 19 characters. So, 19 characters including space. And we can see that they all look monospaced, so that's good. So, 19 characters. Let's just leave us a little note here. 19 characters per line is 27. No, what's 19 times 3? Fifty-seven. Whoa. So fifty-seven characters for three lines of dialogue. So if this is twenty-five, I'm just gonna keep building it out and make sure this is right. Uh, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, forty. 
50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that should be, we should end on a 7, and that should be all the characters we can fit in a given dialog box. It looks right. Well, let's turn off our magic and our key logger, I think I call it. Key logger. Yeah. We'll, we'll take off this. And then also we'll take off our magic bar so we can see better too. So all of this stuff right here can be commented out. And then we should have a clear view of it. it looks okay actually. Okay. So yeah, 57 characters. I don't think I like, you know, we can kind of center it a bit better by lowering it a couple pixels here. What is nice is right now we're not doing anything to wrap the text. Because like we just give it a big old string and then our printf kind of handles the wrapping for us. So let's go see how it's just one string here, but it, it splits it to the to the right um, line. Um, we want this to be a little lower. So let's say maybe five pixels lower. Let's see what that looks like. That's probably too much. Huh. Oh, that is oh, okay. Yeah, that's not the. We'll leave that. That's the Y position for the signpost collidable. So let's go into our signpost and look for where we're printing up the actual text. And that looks like it's right here. A screen height limit minus 40. So let's just do a minus 35 instead. And then we'll, you know, once we get a, a value we're happy with, we can turn it into a constant. Yeah, it's too low now, so maybe... That looks pretty good. That looks pretty centered. Okay. So... First thing is we want to detect, you know, if it's... If the dialog text that we pass in our signpost parameter is a text string of length 57 or less, we don't change anything that we're doing. However, if it's bigger than 57, then we need to split it into at least one dialog box, or into at least two. So every 57 characters, we need an extra dialog box. And I'm not exactly sure how to add another page. So like, let's see how we're handling this at the moment. We have a text that we pass in as a parameter up here into the signpost. Now signpost probably isn't the right word for it. We probably want dialog box class, right? And then it's just that to the signpost. Yeah, we probably want dialog box for this instead of signposts, but let's, you know, we don't need to worry about that just yet. We've got an X and a Y and a width and a height for the signpost dialog box. We have a text length that gets the number of text characters, I believe, and then we have an index, a timer, a next text trigger for it to print on one character at a time, a result of an empty string. We have a flush text method that just resets our text index to one. We're not using that at the moment. I think this was, I was testing how to do this a couple sessions ago and we weren't getting it working. So yeah, we see we had, we were trying to print up the lines one at a time, but now we're just using printf because that was just proving to be pretty difficult. 
So I'm not going to say we gave up on it, but we're we're not focusing on that. Hey, what's up, Ketron? How's it going, dude? Hey, how did you did you um did you end up having that job interview? Yeah, part of me part of me thinks that we just need to dump all of these commented lines and then just kind of rethink it. You know, dude, I'm like, I'm just a little wasted, to be honest. I'm just tired, like really tired. How did the interviews go, dude? I've got, dude, I've got a, um, I've got a big interview coming up Friday. It's the one I've been waiting for. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do my best to get a bunch of sleep, you know, Wednesday, Thursday. So hopefully I've got some good energy for it. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. That is, that's the big one. Um, so I'm hoping that goes well. And then, you know, I've been, it's been a rocky, rocky streaming. You know, I'm, I'm not streaming at seven anymore. Uh, I'm just, yeah, I just can't muster it, but I want to get back on a schedule. It's just tough. I'm just really tired. Okay, I want to see where we're doing, where we're doing this paused. This should be the text box to itself. This is the string that we're actually printing. Okay, nice. Hey, yeah, it, if you got a uh, round two, that's a pretty good for maybe a round three. My last job that I interviewed for, I. I think I had a total of three interviews, so that's that's sounding good at least. Yeah, we don't want to worry about any of this. Let me let me see how we're triggering the paused and see if anything is Okay, so if we're only updating the scene if we're not paused. So that makes sense. Yeah, man. Hey, likewise. I've got, you know, we'll cross fingers for each other. What, what are we doing here? Sign, if not paused, go into our current map and flush out our signposts collided. What are we doing with our signposts collided? Oh, okay. So P is our, our A button. If A button is pressed and there is a signpost. Okay, yeah. So we're going to have to do... Oh, nice. Yeah, dude. Get the lab work in. You got a, you got a name for it? Is it just the lab? Is it... Uh, yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, you got to have some Katronics Den laboratory branding or something. I've always wanted to get some like custom neon signs, you know? Yeah, some get some Ktron neon signs down there. That'd be cool. I really love um what is it? I was in college in a physics lab and they they showed us all the hold on, let me get let me get Jimmy on on camera real quick. Yeah, in physics lab in college, they they showed. Um, gosh, I'm forgetting what the element was, but they they had the element. They excited the tube of gas. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't neon, but they showed what neon looked like, and they showed a bunch of different colors. But I really liked uh, the one that emitted cyan light. I thought that was the coolest. I'm forgetting what the xenon, maybe. <laughs> I'm just guessing. I don't know. We got to redo this because the, uh, holy cow, our holy pony, <laughs> no way. Oh man. Yeah. I want to see the baby kitten. 
dude, that's huge. Your family just like tripled or doubled. That's nuts. That's crazy. You got any good names for the goats? I think um, Mark Zuckerberg's goats are named Satoshi and Nakamoto or something. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, this is this is um not right. Cuz we're we're doing we're triggering um Man, I can't even tell what we're doing here cuz we're if we collide with the signpost, right? So if we dialogue collide is what we're calling it with a signpost and maybe we can check not for signposts but for other dialogue. Oh, nice. Pearl the Pony is cute. If we're facing downwards with the signpost, or if we're not facing downwards and we collide with the signpost, then we're going to become paused and or toggle paused because that's also how you get out of it. So this is the... Yeah, we've got to do this differently because this is only for signpost collidable objects. I don't know if we want to change it to a, just a dialog box collide. Um, because we have to check, you know, the, the signpost collide is different because we have to not be facing downwards. You can't read the sign from up top. Um, and then we flush the text, which just resets the text index so that by the next time you click it, it has to reprint the words. So that makes sense. It's just that when we hit the P button, we're essentially becoming paused. And then where are we updating the signpost itself right here? Why do we do this for I gets one comma two update the signposts? Um, that is wrong. We don't want to bake that in. Um, let's just say. Okay, so basically we update our signposts if we're paused. And that gives us to be here where we run all of this logic. So I'm going to delete all this junk that doesn't work anymore. And we can try to parse what will work for us. Let me just make sure we didn't break anything here. Okay, so 57 characters worth, and they are reloading when we hit it. So that's looking okay. We just want, of course our NPCs right now are just immovable. Okay, it seems to be working. Okay, so if we're paused, we need to keep track of which text string we are going to be printing out. So if there's if there's less if there's 57 characters or less in the text parameter or our signpost object which will probably turn into dialog box object then we keep it as is and we just print out you know we 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 would probably have something that says if there's one page, if there's two page, if there's more. I can't really imagine there being much more than like four or five text boxes in a row. Well, I mean, I don't know. It depends how wordy. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we can do that differently. We can just get a number of pages and extract that from the number of text that we pull here. So we can say... Uh, we can have a, a value here called page length 
And that is going to be whatever the number of our text is. So text length. And then we're going to divide by... What do we want to do? We want to divide it by 57, which is the text, max text length. So, yeah, we would divide it by 57. Is that right? Let's, let's see. If we had like 100 characters, that would be two pages. 100 divided by 57, yeah, would be 1.75. So we need to round up whatever this is, because if we have anything less than 57, like 50, it'd be like a 0.87, so we'd need to round it up. So we can do math.seal on this to round it up. And then forever how many, forever how many page lengths we have, we need to split our text into substrings. And then we start with the first page of the page length for as long as our page does not equal more than the page length, we go ahead and print the substring. Uh, and then we can say, you know, hitting P would advance to the next page if there is a next page. And if we're on the last page, then P would take us out of the dialog box and unpause us. So yeah, we probably we probably want at this point we want we we need to add the um the unpause in here as instead of having it a a ternary operator in our play state because we don't want to accidentally trigger it if there's another page. We don't want to trigger unpaused if there's another page of text that still needs to come out. So let's let's not make this a magic number here. We'll put it in our constants as a max text length something. So max um, text box character length or something. Max text box char length I don't know and with this monospaced font it is 57 so if we ever want to update that font we can change it but max text box char length here okay so we're gonna get the page length rounded up to get that uh, let's let's take out the ternary pause so we don't accidentally unpause. And that is in our not there, not there. Let's pause. Yeah, so let's just say instead of the ternary, we're just gonna say pause gets true here if we collide with it. And then we can say, we can take the uh, was pressed while we're paused in our signpost logic. Right here. Okay, if keyboard was pressed, let's just make sure that we don't break anything and we'll say paused gets false here. Okay, we broke, we broke the triggering. Paused gets true. Paused gets true. the heck I 
think this might be triggering it. I can't tell. Yeah, okay, so this isn't right. This this triggers um, since we hit P and then trigger paused, P was pressed on that very frame, so um, maybe we need a was released. So we listen for a second. If love keyboard was released, P, we have to let go of P before we can become no longer paused. So we'll say then, uh, P released <laughs> gets true, you know. Um, and we'll we'll make we'll make this an actual value up here. We're gonna say P released is is defaulted to not released. And we only pause if we are P released. And then let's see if that fixes it. Okay, nice. Yes, but we also need to become un P released here to reset so that we can trigger it again. Okay, um, it's just not triggering correctly. I have to hit it twice to pull it up again. Not sure why. Hit it once, it works. I hit it, it comes off. P released should be false. Now hitting P isn't triggering it until I hit it twice. So what are we doing? Pause gets false. It's got to be since we're doing it. Yeah, let's try this again. We only become pause true here. I think that ternary was also triggering paused twice somehow. Yeah. Okay, so that's working. Okay. Okay. So now the question is, are we calculating our page length correctly we can try um, we let's try to print we have a page length so let's put on our signpost render we'll just say uh, we're gonna print out page length And we'll just put it at the top here. We should have a page length of one because we're 57 and under on the text length. So page length one, that's looking right. So let's get a bigger text in our declaration here. So we're gonna snag all of these 57 characters and we're going to paste them right here. Right here. Okay. That should be two page length. Yep, two page length. Okay. And then if we do it again, that should be three page length. Nice. And then if we add just one character over the three times 57 limit, we should hit four page length. Nice. Okay, so our page length is working. That's what's that's what we're gonna use to listen to A button presses and advance the next line of text. So we need to split our master 
text into a page amount of text per page, essentially. So how would we, you know, we don't know the amount of page lengths we're going to need. So maybe we split it. We can, we can have a table of all the pages that we need and the table is an index. Uh, the table's a, yeah, uh, a key value pair, you know, one is page one. The value is the text of page one. Index two would be the value of the string of page two. So we, we need to figure out how to split our substrings up to pull all that info. So let's take a look real quick at how we're doing the signpost printing because we use a substring here. So index is one, result is an empty string. We need to change this, but let's just see how we're doing it. We have a text timer. If the timer is bigger than the trigger and we still have a text length to print, then we're gonna go ahead and concatenate. This is where the substring comes in. Text sub method. We give it the text index and the text index. So that's it's a funny way of saying the starting text index and the ending text index is the same value, meaning we're just appending one character at a time. That's why it prints one character at a time. We could slow it down just a bit. Let's say that this is takes twice as long to print, and let's see if we can see. But it's basically just appending appending one character at a time to the master text string. I don't really see that slowing down much. Oh, you know what? Do we, yeah, we don't trigger, do we not reset the text timer? Oh, we don't. This text, next text trigger, next text trigger okay really so if this is maybe it's just so tiny if we have it like two there'd be two seconds per text okay yeah so maybe we did do it right oh no that's like okay so that's not right text timer text timer if the timer is greater than oh we're not resetting the timer all right we need to set our text timer back to one well no we're doing yeah let's do this timer gets set back to to uh, uh well, let's see text timer is zero that's what we're counting to up until the trigger so let's try this again we'll do a 0 0.4 so we're going to reset our text timer to zero so that we don't append the next substring until the text timer is greater than that trigger let's try that now we should see the speed difference here nice okay that's looking right and then what was it, 0 0.08? We wanted to see. Yeah, that's too slow. Okay, well. The 0.04 we did have was incorrect because we weren't resetting our text timer, so this this should probably be a bit faster than this and we're just doing it correctly now so this should be about the speed we're looking for okay so we need to use the substring to pull each page worth of text and store it into a table with key value pairs let me see what the documentation says for the text substring on love2d. 
Let's see. I mean, we're doing it here. And it's just like a starting text colon sub method. So just colon sub string. Let's see. G sub. I'm not seeing any documentation for it. Um, but we have... You know, I, I think we have, we know how to do it. We, we just give the starting index of a substring and the ending index. So basically, yeah, how would we store? Okay, so here, let's do this. Let's see, once our signpost or dialog box object has a page length, we need a pages table to hold all the pages of text and we're going to loop through um, um, gosh we're going to loop through all of our page length Right, so we're gonna say for i gets one. Do we not need local here? Oh, it is. For our page length. We want to um, table.insert Whatever the substring that we want to put in there, I'm just going to say it's one. Uh, it, and it's an index. No, no, no. What is it? It's a list and then a value or list position and then value. So list, list being the pages table and then the value being the string, the substring we're trying to insert and then the position being the I for the index of the pages table we're trying to place each string into. So we can put list position value. Let's just list is our self dot pages. Position is I. Value is let's just say page one. And let's just try to do let's actually do um, the value, how do we put, can we put I as the value in as well? Maybe we can say page is, and then concatenate to a string of the I position there. Can we do that? Table.insert, okay. So yeah, maybe if we, if we try to inspect this pages table now, I'm looking to see since we have a four page text parameter given to this signpost object, I'm trying to see if, if we can inspect this um, pages table of our signpost and I'm looking for the values to, to be one as an index and then it says page is one and then two as an index and it says page is two. And if we can do that, then we might be in business and we just need to figure out the substring stuff. So let's try to do a, it's actually um, table dot ex, uh, or uh, no, yeah, graphics.print. And then we want to print a string of inspecting. Oh yeah, it is capital I, inspect our self dot pages table and then print it up at 0, 010. So let's see if we see our pages in here. Pages one, oh, 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 page length, pages one, page. 
Okay, we can't read it, but... This is where it's nice to have a real debugger. It said pages one. Now, I don't think... Oh, and you know what? I think what we need to do... We do need to give it an array or a... Yeah, a, a, like a dictionary, essentially. So we we need to say for every page length, we're going to insert into... We're going to say our self.pages at index i is going to get an empty table. That way, when we insert into our pages, we insert it into that ith location. And the value, or let's see, list position value. So the position is one. I think we can get rid of that. Let's see. See, I'm still looking for... I'm looking for an index. We want to be able to index... There, that's what I'm looking for. See this, uh, gosh, it's hard to read. Wasn't there a button I had to change the color of the background? But it looks there, yeah, page two pages, ah, and then it's just off screen here. Page, page, page. Pages one. It's as close. Yeah, I need a real debugger is what I need. Oh, what we can do here. Let's try this. Yeah, let's try this. Um, I don't like doing this because it screws up stuff, but let's go to our constants. No, our conf.lua. And we're going to toggle the data console to true and then we're gonna run it let's see uh, oh we need a print we need a print uh, instead of a love.graphics print we just do a print inspect and we don't give it an x and y and then we might be able to see our pages here in the console. Okay, yeah. So look. Yeah, see it's all jacked up. It's it's almost there. It's just that it's a table with an array. It's almost there. We need See look it says pages 1, pages 1, pages 1, pages 1. Pages 2. Okay, okay. That's just cuz it's running 60 60 FPS. Okay. See, I hate I hate doing that because look at all this jacked up stuff we get after that. We have to do that to fix it. I blame WSL for that. So this isn't quite right. So we have a table. We're cycling through all of our page lengths, all of our pages, and we're saying, you know what? Um, every page index... See, and then that's already wrong, I think. We basically need to set an empty table inside every index. I don't know how to do this. We need to say... For I gets one, comma, page length. Hey, sounds good, dude. Hey, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a good night, dude. Yeah, thanks for... Thanks for hanging. I'm going to wrap it up here soon. I, I'm not making much progress. We need a table dot insert an empty table into every page. So we can say self.pages is the, the list. And the value is an empty table. And let's just see if we have an empty table for every page length we have. 
Yeah, so look, there's an empty table for every page. That's looking right. So let's let's say we insert a page and then we also this is where we would say self.pages and then we manually insert into index i the text. So like we can say, let's just put text. We have a page length of four. So let's see if we've got text, 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 and they should be all indexable at their ith location with this method. We should see text, text, text. Yes. Cool. So what this gives us is we can say now we have pages index one is this text pages index two is this text so now we just need to take that substring from our parent text parameter split it up into substrings assign it to each pages at index i and then we can say pressing a button while our page our current page does not equal the last page will then change the page it will refresh our dialog box and also change our text to be the new current text so I think we're on the right track here and this is feeling good but I uh, am not gonna finish this tonight I think I'm gonna wrap it up here so we can do a commit let's just check out our differences right now that looks right uh, I will turn off our Conflua without, I just don't want to accidentally commit the data console being turned on. So we'll make sure that's turned off. And then let's just, yeah, I'm not going to check our get diff because we had a bunch of text we uh, deleted. So a bunch of comments we deleted. I'm going to say that we, we added pages to dialog system but we still need to still need to populate substrings sweet well we did it uh, I'll be back tomorrow and we'll hopefully get more work done on this in the meantime let's raid out here and let's see, let's see, let's see. Yep, we're gonna raid out to our homie here, Hypnotic. I do have to say his name is a little hard to type. But thanks for watching, y'all. Did I do it right? Didn't do it right. All right, sweet. So yeah, tomorrow I'll be back. We'll be doing the substring splitting for our dialog box system. And then we'll have to work on trying to get it working for our NPCs so we can talk to our NPCs and have little story dialogue that way too. But I'll be back. Thanks for watching. Hope you all have a good night.